This is the Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray, which has to be one of the funnest airplanes to fly in all of general aviation. It's available as a light sport or kit aircraft, powered by the Rotax 912 or 914. But recently, the company has been testing a new power plant, the 135 horsepower Rotax 915, which is soon to be released for market entry. Here's Kerry Richter. Our interest in the higher horsepower is for marketing and performance, and yet still keeping the simplicity because we'll be using a constant speed propeller, but it's only controlled by the throttle, not by an independent controller. So the computer on board will um, give you full power and RPMs on takeoff. Once you get up and throttle back some, it'll automatically assume you want to go into cruise, and so it'll reset the pitch, and so it's completely automatic. It'll make it very simple for people. Compared to, say, the 914, the 915 is still a turbocharged engine. It is intercooled, though, however, the 914 is not. But the 915 is also fuel-injected. And you know, along with the fuel injection, it has completely two completely separate lanes, lane A and lane B for the uh, fuel injection system. So all electronics are totally independent of each other, and so you have redundancy. The 915 is a larger displacement engine over the 914. It's essentially the same size cylinders as on the 912S version or the IS and based on that fuel injection system is identical on both engines the 912 IS and the 915 IS. Um, as for the gear reduction it is a torsional shaft now instead of a dog and dog gear to dampen out the torsional vibration on the engine. The additional systems that's in it is the intercooler itself so that you can run higher boost pressures and maintain you know lower cylinder temperatures. The weight is a little bit heavier. Uh, overall, it should be about a 25-pound increase to the engine system over the standard 914. This is, right now, the only one flying in the United States. And so we're in the testing procedures so we can make sure everything's operating as it should. Uh, the productions, I'm not sure when they're planning on putting into production, but it, hopefully later on this year. Currently we have approximately 110 test hours on the engine now and once we get done with the testing, compiling all the information, which hopefully is, will be done around January, um, then we will start working on more um, integrating the engine into our actual aircraft so that it's more compact, everything is arranged a little better. Right now it's just put on there to operate. We'll be making a little bit of uh, rearranging the where the intercooler is operating from and trying to reduce weight in the way the application is done. Currently the aircraft also has a lot of test equipment on it too which has increased the weight on it but that will not be in the production airplane. To find out how well the 915 performs in the Sea Ray, I took a demo flight with company test pilot Daniel Nickens and compared the new airplane with the 914 powered Sea Ray Elite which is no slouch itself. So the 915 represents about a 17% horsepower increase for the airframe, and just as you'd expect, that improves takeoff performance and climb rate, although not dramatically. So we've seen the basics of the 915 IS installed in the Sea Ray. Uh, Daniel and I are out on Lake Dora, well known in Florida, got a seaplane base here. Uh, Daniel, this is similar to the uh, 912 IS in terms of the run-up. Uh, you've got uh, lane A, lane B to check out the ECUs. Any other differences? No, it, it's uh, the pre-flight and the um, pre-flight pre checks are all the same. The advantage of this EMU is it's going to show a lot more data than most of the uh, engine management units and if there's any kind of abnormality or fault it uh, should show up on the display here. And I should mention, <coughs> we talked about this in the <coughs> earlier interview, this is not the final version of either the engine installation or the uh, EMU or the engine display here. I'll, I'll just show a quick shot of it, but uh, the, it, it will probably change. But, but basically, the engine has some sophisticated electronic monitoring that tells you engine RPM, manifold pressure, fuel flow, uh, and all the engine vitals, which is fairly typical. But the 915IS is going to have a little bit more of it. Let's talk about the takeoff uh, with this engine, with this airplane. Not too much different than the 912, is it? It's uh, faster. Mm -hmm. It'll get off the water quicker. Uh, it had so much power, they actually had to dial it back a little bit because it was initially pushing the nose 
uh, under the water trying to uh, make a submarine out of it, but uh, they dialed the uh, back a little bit so you don't get the immediate thrust to do that. And, uh, it's uh, maybe a second or two quicker than the uh, 914 climbs faster. Uh, so Daniel, you flew this out to Oshkosh. Uh, we talked a little bit about the power settings and performance. Tell me what you, uh, what you saw uh, in the current test version of the 915 IS. Well, it uh, flew very much like uh, the Sea Ray does in normal cruise flight, uh, but you can configure it so that, um, there's our verbal, you can uh, configure it so that the uh, you can use a lot less fuel like we're doing right now. We're down at uh, four gallons per hour if you've got a tailwind so you can extend the range. Uh, if you want to uh, go to a more normal cruise, you're probably doing about five and a half gallons per hour at, at that uh, at 95,000 hours, something like that. Now you mentioned that uh, an experimental version, 28 gallons of fuel capacity maximum, uh, and the LSA version, 23. So uh, we pulled the throttle back, and let's go ahead and do that. Uh, if we pull the throttle back uh, to um, three and a half to four gallons per hour, we're still seeing uh, 75 to 80 miles per hour. Yeah. Uh, and even on the uh, smaller tanks, 23 gallon tanks, that's four to five hours easy. So you could uh, do pretty well with extended range. As far as uh, weight and balance, any impact of a slightly heavier 915 IS? It will probably end up being 40 to 45 pounds heavier based upon what we've seen with uh, this one going from the 912 IS to the 915 IS. And uh, because they mount more of the, uh, the, the computers forward, it's uh, and it's just ended up being the weight balance is actually a little better than the 914 Elite version. In terms of, uh, with the 914, if you're single pilot in light, you're probably going to want to put a little ballast up front to have the uh, positive pitch stability, whereas uh, with this one, you don't need the ballast. Yeah, the Sea Ray is amazingly pitch stable. I, for the last time I flew it, I was impressed with it, and, and with the additional weight back there, it's even better. Um, it's actually uh, because, the, believe it or not, the uh, weight in this airplane has shifted forward. Uh, and I think it's because of the, uh, the controls, the computer controls that they've uh, added to the front. It, wasn't, it was more than enough to offset the engine, and they put it far forward. So it's out on a pretty big lever all Yeah, so is the, the ECU is forward? Everything in this airplane, the computer, all the computer controls are under the four deck. As Progressive Aerodyne completes test work on the new Sea Ray, a couple of things are left to be done. Also, the airplane will be marketed as both an SLSA and a kit-built experimental. LSAs can't have constant speed props under current rules, so they'll need to sort that out too. You can find a full review of the Rotax 915 in the January 2018 issue of Aviation Consumer. For AvWeb and Aviation Consumer, I'm Paul Bertarelli reporting. Thanks for watching.